This is a read aloud of the most beautiful roof in the world, pages number 29 to 31. If you're following with the Engage New York Common Core curriculum, it's for lesson number 10. There have been many methods devised for doing just this. The boys begin by helping another one of Meg's graduate students dig pitfall traps within the square. With spoons and small garden trowels, they dig holes seven or eight inches or 18 to 20 centimeters deep. Into each hole, they sink a plastic cup with one inch of alcohol in the bottom of it. By morning, they should have a fair sampling of insects that creep across this portion of the forest floor and drop into the cup. With another graduate student, Meg counts the trees. She begins at the top of the column with the biggest tree. There are two tall trees, the tops of which reach the canopy. Inside the region known as the understory, which reaches approximately 30 feet or 10 meters in height, there are four different species of trees, a grius, a palm, an acacia, and one she does not know the name of, but will look up when she returns to Selby Gardens. These understory trees might someday emerge into the canopy, or they might be crowded out by the young saplings on the next layer down. There are 41 saplings, four or five feet in height, struggling toward the filtered light. Among these 41 are five different species. Then, just inches above the ground, Meg and her assistant count 197 seedlings. They too have begun their struggle toward the light at the top of the canopy. Continuing to count, Meg finds 10 ferns of three different species and 41 lycopods or mosses of which there are five different species. There are also three different kinds of lichen, and on the grius, there are 37 epiphytes. By the time Meg and her assistant finish inventory, they will have counted some 350 plants and 200 different plant species within this five meter square. In a temperate forest, such an area might hold a total of 50 plants and at most 30 different species. Next, Meg needs to sample the kind of insect life that lives just above the ground in the shrubbery. To do this, she gets out a beading tray, a shallow screen tray that measures one square meter or nine square feet. While the boys and her graduate assistant hold the tray, she shakes what she estimates to be a cubic meter of foliage for 10 seconds. They all count together. At the end of the 10 seconds, they set down the tray to see what fell from the shrubbery. One leaf hopper, Meg says, pointing to an insect frantically, frantically hopping about on the screen. Here's one with a really weird jaw. Says, James says as he squints closely in the tray. In this first shake of the foliage, there are also ants, cockroaches, springtails, spiders, and a caterpillar. They do this two more times with different foliage all at the same level within a five meter square. Next, the boys will help their mother do a set of sweeps. Sweeping is another technique for sampling insects in this column. The sweeps, however, unlike the pitfall traps or the beading tray, are aimed more at flying insects. Using a butterfly net, Meg aims at a cubic, Meg aims at a cubic meter of air three or four feet up from the ground. She sweeps the net to the right, then to the left. She does this four times, then sets the net down to count her catch. 
There's one leaf hopper, three diptera or flies, and three beetles. The sweeps, the beating trays, the pitfall traps, and the counting of seedlings and saplings and trees are all ways to make for Meg to take snapshots of the diverse rainforest life.